they've been they've really stepped up their program the last couple years. Now we've got a definite three lanes here. You see Landon Castle, Bobby Gerhardt out on the outside leading that pack. Joey Logano in the middle in that green car. Starting to get some different lines. We'll see if that middle line is actually going to go. It looks like it's moving. It'll it'll move for a while and then it'll stall out. Uh, you're not going to you're not going to outrun all those cars that are lined up on the bottom unless you've got a couple really rockets there. Yeah, the bottom is definitely the short way around this racetrack and you know they run a little bit different groove than we used to here. Kenny used to you'd have to you would use the whole racetrack. Now oh, oh problem right there. The Brian, Scott. But Brian Scott looked as though he blew a tire. And as soon as that happened, the field has to spread behind it. Brian Silas involved in this. That's his Rotella T number 11. Yeah, a lot of cars involved. There's Allie Owens, that 12 cars involved. There's Landon Castle's 88, Mark Davis, the eight, both involved in this incident. There's Ken Butler, the third right there. A lot of damage to that Aaron's dream machine. Well, but we see him He's getting ready right to get out. out. Yeah, so that's what out. we want to see. Yeah, good stuff. Boy, you, yeah. you know, you, you hate to see the big wreck, and you sure hate to see it when it was a mechanical something. Yeah. You know, I mean, a yep. piece of debris, all of a sudden a tire gets cut, and, and everybody's wrecking. Yeah, Ken Butler jumping out of that guy had a little bit of a little bit of flame there. You see him shaking his hands. Yeah, he took his gloves off. I, I don't know if I would have been pulling my gloves off until I got out of that vehicle. Well, he was probably took his gloves off to help himself get out. Oh, get and out. Okay. You kind of know where the flames are. There's Brian Silas, the Shell Rotella T car. He was involved. He had a flat tire earlier, came back out on the racetrack, and then was running with that lead pack, trying to be in a position to get the Aaron's lucky dog if the caution were to come out. And unfortunately, he was involved in this huge accident. Involved in the wrong pack at the wrong time. Let's take another look. Brian Scott, one. that white car, about six seventh back, he blows a rear tire, goes up the racetrack, catches Kim Butler, makes hard, hard contact. Brian Silas makes hard contact. The four of Taylor Malsom also involved, that red and white car down to the bottom of the racetrack. A.J. Hendricks in the seven involved. Mark Davis, the eight. There's another view. Watch the, watch the white car left of your screen. All of a sudden. That's right just, in front of Justin just Algar. Algar right. Just barely, just gets barely by. got by, as well as Joey Logano. Ken Butler nowhere to go. Eddie Mercer drives to the bottom of the racetrack. Brian Silas, Taylor Malsom make some contact. My Michael Phelps in the 45 was involved. Tell you what I really want to do. I want to give an attaboy to a bunch of the guys that were behind the wreck. A lot of them never had a chance of missing it. Yeah, that right. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them checked up and, yeah. and didn't drive in there. I mean, it really did a good job. Yep. Yeah, all these guys really had nowhere to go. No, no. no reaction time, anything, when that tire went down. See the fire there on Ken Butler's car, yeah. Aaron's dream machine. A lot of damage to that car. There's another glance. Again, it's the white. The 25. Yeah, the right rear tire goes. Justin Algar just barely gets by. Joey Logano barely gets by. Hard, hard contact with a lot of these cars. Right along. This is Brian Silas. Ooh, there's a contact with Taylor Malson, then hard, hard contact with the outside wall. Now we heard Brian Silas get out of the gas. He knew something was happening in front of him. And then some guys behind him didn't get out of the gas thinking he, they could probably drive through it. There's Matt Carter. This is going to be a good look. And you see Matt already off slowing down on the brakes. You see the 90. Yep. That was Gabby DiCarlo. Gabby DiCarlo yeah. makes contact with another. You see all the debris on the racetrack. Matt just slowing down, picking his way through the debris as best he can in the cars, and no damage to that 46 car. Good heads up driving, like you said, Kenny. Right, and it just it's just a matter of uh, who's behind you and how close they are. Because when you just check up here, there's good. If you just check up instantly, there's a good chance you're going to get punted. I mean, you know, you got to have time to get your arm up, and and hopefully their spotters are on top of it, and they're driving far enough ahead that uh, they also see the activity up there. You got to look way up there because at 200 mile an hour, we're traveling a football field a second. Right. So, you know, when you get there, 
the wreck still you, you get there quick you get there you get there Rick Justin Algar on pit road now We've got the hood up on that race car looks like he might have caught a little debris in the front of that car Kenny I don't see see the debris right. there in the very front that would have probably had to have been from the the actual carcass coming see the rubber on the hood yeah yeah so that would have been from the carcass coming off they're going to put him back out on the racetrack quick and probably bring him back down and put some Verabon on there. Let's go back down pit road to Wendy Venerini. The 16 of Justin Algar, of course, a points racer in this uh, event, and he does have a hole in that radiator. They are cheap, trying to keep him on the lead lap, though, so they came down pit road at its water, and Jim Pullman sent him back out. They might have to come back down pit road if you see him again, but they are going to remain on the lead lap or try and do so to get as uh, many points as possible and not lose much ground. This would be a big hit if Justin has to change his radiator. Yeah, a great battle for third in the points. That's for sure. Anytime you have to go behind the wall, of course, there's going to be a lot of cars. I don't know which ones will be behind the wall that he right. was already racing. There's a list of the cars involved in the crash. I think probably some more cars that's, than that. That's were, the got short a list. Of it. Yeah, that's the short list. And unfortunately, the list is a little bit longer than that. Yeah, if Ali, <laughs> Ray, what's going on with Joey? Well, Logano just came down pit road in that interstate batteries car. They wanted to pull a little bit of tape off of the front grill. He said it was just a little bit overheating, and they're cautious because they want to be able to run the whole race here. So pulled one strip off of the entire front on the lower edge of the grill. Remember, it was his teammate, the 25 of Brian Scott, that the right rear tire shredded. Almost an explosion there, and he was right in line, and so everyone behind him had to check up and get out of the way and some weren't so fortunate we'll be back with more of the arca remax 250 right after this thursday on an all-new wreck it's back to school for bill and the o'hare towing crews but in this class the assignments are never easy and always dangerous to so hook up to an all-new episode of wreck life in the crash lane thursday 10 p.m eastern 7 p.m pacific cleanup continuing here at talladega super speedway it was triggered by a blown right rear tire and the number 25 of Brian Scott. Let's look back. Brian's going to be in that white car right there. Right rear tire goes. Absolutely nowhere to go for all these cars here. A lot of guys did a nice job avoiding this, but for the unfortunate several that uh, were caught up in it, a tough break this early. That's the 22 of Tim Butler third, and he gets caught up and. The flames coming out of that. Another look at this. Yeah, amazing. Just nowhere to go. Yeah, amazing. Justin Algar just barely getting by as well as Joey Logano. And we see. know Justin Algar has damage to the front of his race car. He is right behind that 25. And as soon as the tire shreds, it, run, it hits the front end of his car and does damage to the front. He does a nice job. As soon as that happened, he turned his car to the right just enough room to get by Brian because he right. knew that Brian was coming up the hill right you spin here at Talladega you're going up the bank towards the outside wall Justin knew that and he, his quick reaction allowed him to miss that Brian Silas got touched by Eddie Mercer but that didn't turn him around then he made no. some contact with Taylor Malson yeah the little sometimes you get run into square in the back and, and it doesn't mess you up wound up getting messed up anyway yeah. but it wasn't because Eddie hit so a lot of cars messed up as a part or as a result of what just took place. Again, there's the 11 of Brian Silas. Well, he had a tire problem at the start of the race that put him two laps down, and then someone else's tire problem had a very tiring day. Yes. It was a tiring day for Brian Silas. But it's over now, so he'll have to watch this one from either pit road or the grandstands. Out in front of the field, it's still Tom Hessert the third. After James Busher had problems with second gear at the start of this race, Tom Hessert the third took the lead and has never relinquished it. We've had three cars that have been busted for speeding on pit road, exiting pit road, the 18, the 48, and the 51, Eddie Mercer and the 51. Unfortunately, they will have to go to the back of the longest line, which is basically going to be the lead lap line for our restart. 
seen a lot of cars stay out on the racetrack. It is early in this one. We've only completed 17 of the 94 laps.